Hello and welcome to Moments in History. I'm Linda Shenton Matchett, author, speaker, and history geek. While researching my stories, I unearthed tons of intriguing historical information that I can't share in my books. So I've created this channel as an opportunity to share these tidbits with you. I really appreciate you stopping by to watch. Before World War II, the U.S. military showed very little interest in using aircraft and flight nurses to evacuate the wounded soldiers to rear areas. The Global War, however, forced the U.S. Army Air Forces to revolutionize military medical care through the development of air evacuation, which was later known as aeromedical evacuation, and their flight nurses. In early 1942, Airlift units in Alaska, Burma, and New Guinea successfully evacuated patients using the same transport aircraft that had carried men and supplies to the front. The realization of a need to continue these air evacuations of the wounded caused the U.S. Army Air Force to create a medical air evacuation squadron and started a rush training program for flight surgeons, enlisted medical technicians, and flight nurses at Bowman Field near Louisville, Kentucky. The need for flight nurses became critical after the Allied invasion of North Africa in 1942, and the women at Bowman Field had not even finished their training when they were sent to North Africa on Christmas Day. Two months later, on February 18, 1943, the U.S. Army Nurse Corps' first class of 39 flight nurses formally graduated at Bowman Field. Second Lieutenant Geraldine Dishroon, the honor graduate who would later serve on the first air evacuation team to land on Omaha Beach after the D-Day invasion, received the first wings presented to a flight nurse. As part of their training to prepare for any emergency, flight nurses learned crash procedures, received survival training, and studied the effects of high altitude on various types of patients. In addition, the women had to be in top physical condition to care for these patients during rigorous flights. Because the aircraft used for air evacuation also transported military supplies, they were not allowed to display the Red Cross on the outside. With no markings to indicate their non-combat status, the evacuation flights were vulnerable to enemy attacks. For this reason, flight nurses and medical technicians were volunteers. Needless to say, the typical Army Nurse Corps uniform of the white dress or a skirted suit uniform did not work in flight. And although some resisted, including ANC leadership, the women were allowed to wear trousers. The first few squadrons improvised uniforms, cutting down the dark ANC service jacket to waist length and purchasing trousers. Eventually, an official flight nurse uniform was authorized comprised of a waist-length gray-blue jacket and matching trousers and skirt, with a light blue or white blouse. In 1944, the uniform was changed to olive drab with a khaki blouse. Depending on the climate, nurses also wore the combat airmen's heavy flight gear. The role of the flight nurse was revolutionary. No physician accompanied her on the flight, and she outranked the male surgical technician who worked under her authority. She was trained to start IVs and oxygen, tasks normally reserved for physicians at that time. In addition, she was trained to deal with medical emergencies, including shock, hemorrhage, and sedation. The primary responsibility for the lives of these patients rested on the shoulders of the flight nurses. Their emergency training was put into use in many cases throughout the war. Flight nurses and technicians successfully evacuated patients into life rafts after a ditching in the Pacific, unloaded patients from a burning plane after a crash landing in North Africa, and loaded many patients under enemy fire in the jungles of Burma. Flight nurse Lieutenant Jeanette Gleason even parachuted to safety in the mountains of China. In one dramatic incident, a plane carrying 13 nurses of the 807th MAETS from Sicily to Italy was blown off course and crash-landed in Nazi-occupied Albania on November 8, 1943. With the help of Albanian partisans and allied operatives, the crew, nurses, and surgical technicians all evaded capture and crossed snowy mountains to be rescued at the coast 
a two-month ordeal. For transport, the Douglas C-47 Skytrain was chosen and often referred to as the workhorse of air evacuation. This dependable two-engine plane was used for shorter flights, with a combat theater could fly to forward landing strips close to the battlefield. A C-47 carried 18 to 24 patients, depending on how many were on litters. For transoceanic flights, the four-engine Douglas C-54 Skymaster was used. The preferred load for a C-54 was 18 litter patients and 24 ambulatory. These flights carried patients from the combat theater stateside when the patient required 90 to 100 days of recovery or was eligible for medical discharge. The 830th Medical Air Evacuation Squadron was stationed at Hickam Field in Honolulu and traveled throughout the Pacific Theater, positioned at a base in the Dutch Indies or bivouacking on islands large and small scattered to quickly retrieve wounded soldiers. Conditions were often primitive. Flight nurses lived in tents, lacked water, contended with tropical heat and humidity, and faced boredom in between flights. The 830th evacuated soldiers from Guam, Saipan, Leyte, the Marshall Islands, Okinawa, and the Philippines, among many other islands and atolls. The wounded were loaded quickly. It was a point of pride to complete the operation in the shortest time possible. The planes transported the patients to military hospitals and ultimately Hamilton Field near San Francisco. And then the flight nurse and accompanying medical technician returned to Hawaii to start the cycle all over again. From March 1943 through October 1945, the Pacific MAES evacuated over 111,000 patients at the peak of combat in May and June 1945. Medical air flight transport transported as many as 10,000 patients a month. Army Air Force Air Surgeon David Grant cited air evacuation as one of the top medical innovations of World War II, along with penicillin, blood plasma, and frontline surgery. Sometimes the nurses had to improvise with their care. On September 24, 1944, Mary Louise Hawkins was on a flight evacuating 24 wounded soldiers from Palau to Guadalcanal. The C-47 that she and the wounded were on ran low in fuel, and the pilot had to make a forced landing in a small clearing on Bologna Island. As the plane landed hard in that too small space, one of the propellers tore through the fuselage and severed the trachea of one of Hawkins' wounded soldiers. By using the inflation tube from one of the so-called May West life preservers, Hawkins performed an emergency tracheotomy. The contrivance kept the soldier alive until further aid arrived 19 hours later. For her courage and skill, Hawkins was awarded the Distinguished Flying Clause, Cross. On March 22, 1945, two CG-4A gliders landed in a clearing near the bridgehead at Remagen, Germany, to evacuate 25 severely injured American and German casualties. Once the gliders were loaded, the transport successfully snatched them from their landing site and towed them to a military hospital in France. In the second glider, First Lieutenant Suella Bernard, who had volunteered for the mission, cared for the wounded en route. One of the first two nurses to fly into Normandy after the D-Day invasion, she became known as the only nurse to have participated in a glider combat mission during World War II, and for this, she received the Air Medal. Then there's First Lieutenant Aleda Lutz, who flew 196 missions and evacuated over 3,500 men. In November 1944, during an evacuation flight from the front lines in Lyon, France, her C-47 crashed, killing all aboard. Awarded the Air Medal with four oak leaf clusters, she posthumously received the Distinguished Flying Cross. Flight Nurse Lieutenant Reba Whittle was taken prisoner by the Germans after crashing behind enemy lines on September 27, 1944. She returned to the U.S. in February of 1945 and received both the Purple Heart and the Air Medal. Eventually, about 500 Army nurses served in the members of 31 medical air evacuation transport squadrons that operated worldwide. 
It's a tribute to their skill that of the 1,176,048 patients air evacuated throughout the war, only 46 died en route. 17 flight nurses lost their lives during the war. A true tragedy. I hope you've enjoyed today's moment in history. If you'd like to learn even more history, please stop by my blog found at www.lindashintonmatchett.com. And please consider subscribing to my channel and click the bell icon below to receive notifications of new episodes that generally release on the second and fourth Friday of every month. Thank you for watching and have a great rest of your week.